Are you a fresher and you're ready to start your data engineering journey in 2025? Maybe you're overwhelmed by all the skills that you need to learn. Maybe you're wondering where to begin or how to build a resume that grabs the attention as a fresher that doesn't have any practical experience. Today, I'm not just giving you a roadmap, I'm giving you the blueprint, a data engineer honeycomb of traits that breaks down everything that you need to know. By the end of this video, you will have a clear path and actionable steps to launch your data engineering career from. Let's jump in. All right, in front of you is the data engineer honeycomb of traits. It's a roadmap that I created to visually kind of break down all the essential skills that you need as a data engineer throughout your career. So don't be overwhelmed by this. This is not everything that you need to get going and get your foot in the door. This is everything that you're going to need to gain and learn as you move through your career. So it is grouped into four different categories. The first one, programming. Probably the more interesting piece of this for those of you that are real techie nerds like me, your coding and these are your scripting essentials, right? Your Python, your SQL. Next, we have the soft skills. So the soft skills are the critical traits that you're going to need for collaboration and leadership throughout your career. Next, in the bottom left hand corner, we have the software and, software and platforms. These are the tools that you will work with almost every day. Things like cloud platforms, Excel, believe it or not. These are you know, Power BI. These are tools and resources, ETL tools. These are the tools and resources that you're going to use almost daily. And keep in mind that when you're looking at this Honeycomb of Traits, the heart of it, as you see in the Honeycomb, is SQL. SQL is the heart of all of the data professions, whether you are going into analytics, data science, or data engineering, SQL is a must have in order to break into data. Now, that being said, when you're looking at the honeycomb of traits, you start in the center, start with those SQL skills, and then you slowly work your way out as you move into your career and as you move through your career. So. Just to you know, wrap this up, in the bottom right-hand corner, we do have the concepts. These are the more conceptual things, the more you know, uh, ethereal things that are not as concrete as programming or soft skills even. These are the concepts that you need to build, understanding of data modeling, understanding of cybersecurity, and how to you know, protect your data and your company's data against potential hackers. So these are the things that we're going to jump into as we move through the roadmap in addition towards the end i'm going to give you an example of a project-based resume that you can use as you're building up your projects as you're building up your skills in order to get your foot in the door and get into a data career so follow me as we go further into our honeycomb of traits All right, we're gonna break this honeycomb down step by step so that it's not quite so overwhelming for you. First, again, master SQL. SQL is the heart of all of the data engine data careers, not just data engineering, but science and analytics as well. So regardless of which of the data careers you're going into, you must learn SQL. Uh, so start with your beginner SQL, understanding how to create tables, how to create views, how to write just basic SQL statements, your select from where. Next, focus on you know your Python. You could once you get SQL down, you could move on to Python. As far as the programming skills, um, you know you could start with data manipulation. Libraries like Pandas and NumPy will really help you with that. In addition, check out Polars. I have a video from earlier where I went over the differences between Python, I mean, between Pandas and Polars, and it's a great video. Uh, be sure to check that out. Uh, Polars gives you a little bit more speed and versatility within that library. All right, 
once you do that, you can move on to the scripting and automation for building your ETL and ELT pipelines. If you want to know what the difference is between ETL and ELT, be sure to check out the concepts, the data engineering concepts library that I have. It's, it's one of the videos that are in there. Now, as you're doing this, the biggest tip that I have as you're learning is to start to build your portfolio recreate some small projects like transforming data from csv files and moving that data into a database to get some hands-on practice and experience in addition you could start to build a whole portfolio right take that data set and as you move through with the honeycomb of traits as you move into you know from sql to python to an etl tool into some of the visualization tools create a whole end-to-end -end project that for a data set that you're passionate about, excited about, that during an interview, that excitement and that passion for learning is gonna come through along with your passion for that data set. All right, next we're gonna move on to some of the software and, software and platforms that you'll need to understand in order to be a data engineer. All right. Let's talk about some of these software and platforms that you are going to need. Believe it or not, Excel is going to be important. A lot of you will probably be going into an analytics career before you get a chance to move into a data engineering career. It's just how things are. Uh, so don't don't feel too bad if that's the path that you end up taking. You'll get into that data engineering position if that's what your passion is. But regardless you're going to need to understand excel in and out for multiple reasons and i'm going to tell you why so you have to learn excel because one business loves your business users love excel there it's something that's easy for them to understand it's something they've been using for years they're comfortable with they trust it they understand it um and you're going to have to understand how to take what they've done in excel and migrate it into a data warehouse all of those transformations that they've done, they're not going to call them transformations. They're going to be like, well, I fixed up the data and I made this change or I made that change. And you're going to have to understand what and how they did there in order for you to translate those into your business requirements for your data warehouse, for your ETL processes that you're going to create off of it. And so you're going to have to be able to understand that. You may be using Excel as a transition a reporting tool as you get people to move from Excel into a Power BI or a Tableau. So be sure that you familiarize yourself with different functions in Excel, you know, different equations so that you understand how to migrate that into your other tools that are a little bit more advanced. Now, next, familiarize yourself with some of the ETL tools like Airflow, ADF, which is an Azure Data Factory, Synapse, Fabric, you know, be sure that you can cr use one of those tools to create a ETL or ELT process. Uh, again, the only difference is whether you load the data first or you transform the data first. Um, but these tools really automate a lot of the heavy lifting for your data movement so that you don't have to write it all out in Python, right? So that you don't have to do everything with procedures. Um, and so understand ETL tools leads me into the next piece, which is explore cloud platforms like AWS or Azure. Begin with storage solutions. Understand how those storage solutions work. S3 containers, uh, ADLS, which is Azure Data Lake Storage, and progress into data warehousing tools like Redshift and Synapse. Next, we're going to go over some of the concepts that you're going to need as a data engineer as you're moving into your career. All right, let's talk about some of the foundational concepts that you're going to need as you move into a data engineering career. First one, and the most important, is going to be understanding data modeling and how to structure data into star or snowflake schemas for analytics. In addition, understand what uh, OBT is, one big table. So understand that data engineering concept. And sometimes it's dimensional modeling. Sometimes you venture towards a little bit closer to that one big table. And sometimes the happy median is somewhere in between. 
um, you know, we would all love it if things were star schema and dimensional. And and the reality is that sometimes that just doesn't work out. But understanding different uh, data modeling concepts, how to accurately data model is super important. There is a author out there. There's a brilliant data engineer out there called uh, Kimball, Ralph Kimball. And you could go out and get his set of books about data modeling. There are some great books, have some great examples, have some downloadable content that you could pull some data sets and then practice along with the book. Um, and I'll be sure to put those links to those books down in the comments as well. But uh, but Kimball's uh, data modeling books are, are really fantastic for learning the fundamentals. Next, you're going to need to understand the basics of data warehousing and governance and then architecture to really be able to design scalable systems. Now, these are things that as you move through your career, you'll learn and you're gonna pick up. The big piece as you're entering your career, data warehousing. So again, data modeling, data warehousing, you get those under your belt, you're good to go into a entry level data engineer position, even a mid-level data engineer career um, without having to get too much into the rest of it. Here. Now, again, actionable tip here take it sample data set and design a schema for it practice loading that data into a mock data warehouse uh, whether you have installed sql server express onto your local machine um, or you're using a azure uh, sql server and using the free tier there practice extracting and loading data into that data warehouse into that database um, you know, a big thing that you'll be doing is hitting APIs. So that's another piece here that is in the honeycomb of traits to understand APIs and what they are and how they work and understand that each one's different, but it's a good uh, practice exercise to go out, identify an API, learn how to pull the data and push it into a data warehouse. So uh, also some great projects out there hitting APIs and pulling data and uh, and doing transformations. And then again, getting something into a visualization. And then you've built a portfolio. You've start to build some projects. Uh, again, find a data set that you're passionate about, that you're excited about. Um, you know, and from, you know, from my experience, from my 25 years, when working on projects, be sure that you're documenting each of your processes clearly so that you could show your stakeholders uh, the value that you've been able to deliver. There is so much that as data engineers, we take for granted that people understand that we do. Um, so documenting, hey, this used to take this business unit X amount of hours to do weekly or monthly, and now it's all automated. I've reduced the number of man hours down to you know an hour a month from 10 hours a month or whatever the case may be um and been able you've been able to put that value back into the business right so being able to show your value into the business is a good practice to start doing now so that when you get to that first review that second review that fifth review down the road then you could show your value and you could move up quicker through those ranks into a senior data engineer into a architect um by showing that you understand the business value that you're providing. Next, we're gonna be talking about how you could use the honeycomb to further build out your resume as a fresher. All right, so how does this roadmap translate into a standout resume that's gonna grab the attention of a recruiter or a hiring manager? Let's talk about that. Step one, you're gonna highlight the relevant skills. Part of this is understanding what the skills are that are on the job rec. So, you know, you're gonna be building these skills as you move along, a job rec's gonna come up, you're gonna be like, oh crap, I've not hit all these things yet. That's okay. If you hit 60% of what's on a resume, on a job rec, apply for it. And you're going to build your resume around that. You don't have to, specifically build your resume around each and every job rec that you apply for, but maybe have two or three. You might have one if you decide to, you know, really broaden things and you're hitting both Azure and AWS, you might have a Azure-based resume and an AWS-based resume. Um, but 
here, we're going to use the honeycomb as our checklist as we're going through things. So, for example, be sure to, as you're creating the resume, that you have created projects where you've demonstrated your SQL skills, where you've demonstrated those Python skills and your cloud platform skills, and that you have some understanding of ETL and what different tools that you've been able to work with. And be sure that you have a you know two or three good project examples that you could put on your resume here. Next, we're gonna sh again we're gonna showcase those projects. You know we're we're gonna start by highlighting the skills. Again, list out the skills that you have. Next section, you're gonna list out the projects that highlight those skills that really show your recruiter, show your hiring manager that you have practiced these things and have a good foundational knowledge and understanding of how to use them. So if you're new to projects and uh, you know new to you know data engineering at all, then you're not gonna have a whole lot of practical skills, not pra a lot of practical knowledge. So your projects are gonna be your bread and butter for getting somebody's attention. Next step, is certifications and how you add value you know certifications and tools like aws azure gcp which is the google cloud platform really help you to differentiate yourself a little bit and help you to stand out there are some great data engineering certifications that um sorry my dogs so i have the zoomies um there are some great data engineering certifications out there, like the IBM data engineering certifications. That's 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 a route. If you really want to get in depth with something, the IPM data engineering certification is super in depth, really covers a lot of things. Um, but I would focus more towards those cloud platform uh, certifications like the AWS data engineer and the Azure data engineer associate. Um, check those out those are great certifications they'll help you stand out especially with businesses that focus on those two cloud platforms as you are writing your resume keep it concise one page is about all you need especially at this level in your career you know keep things in bullet points as much as you can and use action words like optimize built streamlined don't use buzzwords a whole lot people will see right through that but if you were able to, maybe in a current role, maybe you're in customer service, or maybe you are in sales, or maybe you're in some type of accounting role now, or finance role now, where you've been able to automate something because you're learning these skills, be sure to put that on your resume. Those are great things. As you're doing it, again, like we mentioned, be sure to point out the business value that you brought back to the business by doing this. You saved the company X amount of man hours per month. Be sure that you're pointing it out in your resume when you're filling it out. Um, but keep it short, keep it concise. One page, especially at this level in your career, is, is all you need. All right, so now it's your turn. Take a look at the honeycomb and tell me, which of these skills are you already working on? Maybe you have some of the skills already. Maybe you are ready to move into the advanced SQL or maybe the intermediate Python. Which areas do you feel are gonna be the most challenging to you? These are things that will help me to further develop my content to help you to attain your data engineering uh, position and to further your career. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the video for more insights into data engineering. And thank you so much for watching. And I will see you next time.